Still the burning in her lungs. Hi. Welcome back to another uh, chill review. Chill reaction. Not much going on here today. We're listening to Arcade Fire's Funeral. It lost in a poll like a while ago. So um, I'm just covering it now. Thank you for sticking it out with me if you've been waiting for this one. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't know anything about Arcade Fire, so it's going to be uh, cool diving in. Uh, the album name is Funeral, though, so I'm expecting something sad. I don't know if it's going to be sad, but whatever happens, uh, happens. So thank you for the support. Uh, continue dropping your recommendations as always and let's hop right into it um guys all right track number one is neighborhood one tunnels <laughs> <laughs> I waited too long on this one. Shit. Uh, it sounds like a sort of love song. Uh, a, a very kind of like, you know, it's me and them and nobody else in the world kind of kind of love song. Like no, like no one else matters. Even in even in these these treacherous times where, you know, the, the it's snowing out and it's, you know, people can't. People aren't going outside. People don't really exist anymore because of this storm. We're meeting out in the middle of the town. Uh, we're having babies, but we can't name them because we, we have we both have dementia and we forgot. That's kind of what this song was about. I loved it. I love the constant, unwavering energy that this track bought. I loved his vocals too. It's like the, I I loved his emotion. I feel like he got loud at like the perfect parts. Track number two is neighborhood number two, uh, like a like a boss. I like these drums though. Like this. Huh? Ooh, that's like a really, it's like a higher octave vocal going on too. Police disco lights. It's kind of a bar. Okay. 
Okay. I was focusing more on the instrumental, I think. And I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I like the bridge there with those little, with the violin. I think it was a violin. Not too sure, though. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused, sort of, about, like, th we're talking about here. You know what I'm saying? Like, his brother, his brother Alexander, right, Alex, uh, should have been named Leica instead. And he says that in a way of kind of like an insulting way, like, oh, you should have just been named Leica. You know, I, I don't know what Leica means or something like that. For all I know, it's just, it's it's a really bad word. And I don't, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's just, I'm ruining my channel right now. He's going to draw attention to the neighborhood again. Once dad comes home, you know, he's going to get a whooping. You know, neighbors, gonna, neighbors gonna, are going to call the police and then they're going to dance when the police arrive. And then the police lights. Track number three is uh, Un and Sans Lemire. That song was pretty good to me. Uh, I don't know if it's anything I would be like, holy shit, that's spectacular too. I don't know if I really go back to it. Uh, and it's not because of the French words, even though I don't understand French. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it, right now, I, I think maybe I'll put the first song on like a pedestal because that song was just so great. T telling someone close in your life about y y y if you see a shadow or like just about some sort of problem. I think the French part was just talking about maybe something to do with the Eiffel Tower or croissants, whatever, whatever French things are usually discussed. Uh, I, I mean, I, I like how we kind of switched up on the language. You know what I'm saying? It takes me back to the to when Bjork used to do that. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think it's pretty cool. Jock number four is neighborhood number three, Power Out. Kick drum is hitting my G spot. Yo, come on, pause, bro. Oh my god. I fucking love these drums, dude. Me, this is me, this is me, this is me. Some chimes right now? Are we serious? Oh, that was... <sighs> okay, story-wise, sounds like something con continued from the first song. That was my favorite song so far. And uh, listen, if I'm just saying, if there's, if there's another song in this album that I like more than that, I'm going to be fucking surprised. And something about those drums just spoke to me. Something about those drums just just called my name. I said, David, this is me. This, uh, this is this is me here. Uh, that guitar solo, which I was I was sort of expecting one to come, and I'm so glad it did because that was just incredible. Uh, easily my favorite on here so far. It's gonna be it's gonna be heavy in rotation. I'm not gonna lie. This is getting added straight, straight to all my, all, all my maybe all my playlists. I can just imagine myself walking to that song. You know what I'm saying? Not nothing crazy, just walking. 
just walking, just walking around, you know, going for a little stroll. It's a stroll, you know. I mean, a guy could use a stroll every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Track number five is neighborhood four. That kind of bothers me that neighborhood four is track number five. That should be like aligned. You know, you should have put the French song like after. The These background, this background ambient sounds a little scared. Time keeps creeping through the neighborhood, killing old folks, waking up babies, just like we knew it would. Neighbors starting up a fire. What kind of fire? Arcade fire. <laughs> Ending, bro. I I really liked how gentle that song was. I was, especially coming after that last song, I was not really expecting that. And I just I I think the songwriting on here is the best so far. Uh, especially the line about the pot, you know, being filled with water, but not really boiling, and in the flames. So I think maybe the the pot could be like a metaphor for like a human life or some shit, and the the water is supposed to boil if it's hot. And maybe his his internal functionality or someone else's functionality is not working. So you can't get the flame. You can't get the water to boil. You can't get that shit to go. So, I mean, I don't know what it necessarily means. All, all I know is that that was the part that I analyzed. <laughs> that I, I just chose to I chose to talk about. But anyways, I really... I, I, this one is also a, another highlight for me. I, I, I just loved how, how simple and calm his vocals were. And I, I loved how kind of freaked out the instrumental was of itself. Track number six is crown of love oh wasting no fucking time sounds like some shit i would do Is my mom walked in? Oh, I, I, I hear that background vocal. That shit is nice. The way you said heart there was crazy. I can definitely see how that one would be a lot of people's favorites. Uh, it's, it's a very kind of common and simple, you know, love story. Take me back. I'm sorry. I'll never love again. I, I can only love you. Your name is the only one I can say. I, you know, I love it. You know, the, you know I, <laughs> this 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 spark inside me. Only you can light it. I loved how that ended. I gotta say, I, I love really how that ended off. You know, just building up one final big emotion and just kind of releasing it and letting it go. Track number seven is Wake Up. Wake Up. Oh, yeah. 
talk, talk to him. Fucking talk to him, bro. Let him know. ended that one ended kind of how it started uh wait was this the song that started spontaneously or was it the one that before it might have been the one before anyways message wise message wise i think i enjoyed this one the most on the album so far um the instrumentation too i would i would put uh similar liking as the fourth song when i like power out uh but i think it's just about overall uh how he in a sense is fucked because he Hit, you know, hit, he bottled his emotions and now he's kind of numb and now if the children of the next generation do it they're going to be fucked and if they're fucked then we're fucked because they because they're they are going to care for us when we're old that's what's going to happen and then the second half of the song i i, I get kind of lost on uh they talk about their lightning bolt kind of determining where they're going to go and how, how they know where they're going to go post post death postpartum but anyways, I, 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 I liked the whole song. Uh, I, I liked the first half a little bit more uh, than the way it ended. But still, I found, I found it to be very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Track number eight is Haiti. What instrument is happening right now? I don't know. What are you saying, bro? Kind of spacing out right now. Kind of ending freaky. I like it. Wait a minute. Oh. Haiti, the country here. Yes. We're talking about there's, there's some kind of war going on. I don't, know, I don't know if there was some kind of war in Haiti. Sounds like there was. And they're just kind of hiding in the forest waiting for the soldiers to pass by so then they can do something. I don't know. But anyways, I like the female vocals on that. I thought it was a nice little change of pace. More French vocals talking about probably some more Eiffel Tower. Uh, is Haiti a French country? Is Haiti from France? Or do, do they got French people down there or up there wherever it is? I'm, I'm really un, uneducated when it comes to geography. Uh, I, I, I kind of spaced out during it. I don't know if that means anything bad i think it's kind of a skill issue on my end but uh i still thought it was a pretty cool song and i love that transition tra transition i love that trans tra i'm gonna jump out the window i'm gonna jump out the window Okay. 
car coming in. Remember, I heard that shit. Is live. You need water. I love whoever is doing that with eyes out there. I, I love the sound of that. My only complaint, my only complaint is that I, I mean, it just felt a tiny, a tad repetitive, just a tad, just a tad repetitive. Uh, but I, I once again, once again, I do love all the lyrics and messages, especially on the later half of this album. Although I like the sound of this album more in the first half, I think it's really starting to come into its own lyrically on the second half. Uh, just kind of talking about self protection and protecting yourself from, I think, I think sleeping and dreaming is the way to kind of escape what's really out there, what the threats that are lurking within the night. And this one is just kind of, you know, reflecting on that. And I really like that one, even though it does repeat. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> track number 10 is in the back seat. In the back. Now she is me as fuck right now. She is me. Another mention I have a lightning bolt. Alright. Yo, pour one out for Alice, guys. I kind of appreciate the slow pace of this. I think it, I think I like it a lot, actually. Does she sound like Bjork or is it just me? Just like a little bit. Like her voice does. Not like her singing though. Nah, you should have kept the guitar going on that part. That oh my fucking god. instruments in the back kind of sound familiar to a song that a couple songs ago. I got the world's smallest violin going on right now. I don't know what this is. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta put that track I gotta, I gotta put that track up with track four as those two be my favorites. Uh, her, vocally, that, that, that was the best performance on this album, I think. I, I really think it was. I, I, I don't know where, I don't know where that energy that she has on that came came from. Uh, I, I should have heard more of that on this. I should have, I should have heard way more. Uh, just, it's just kind of about feeling safe in a very childhood, you know, kind of, kind of memory. And it seems like she's finally kind of like growing up a little bit. So I think it ends hopeful. I think I, I don't know who Alice is though. I think if I had a, just a little bit of context as to who Alice was, I feel like this it would it would, it would give me the world and in perspective on I don't because yeah I'm talking about this whole project. I think that last song gave me a, gave me a lot. I think I think it did give me a lot. Although I can't uh, put together a story in my head of certain characters and where they are placed here, even though there are a lot of different kinds of names mentioned. Uh, it seems like we're t just talking about 
two sides of life you know c- kind of the, the very early stages of it and the late late stages of it you know uh and not not late as in you know old i think late as in death you know like the moments where, right where you're like about to die i think uh i think if i had to describe this album in one word it's very fragile i think this album is very fragile uh it talks about a lot of moments of feeling safe within certain spaces and a lot of moments uh, where it da- you can you know danger is very very much there the lyric i think that represented you know the danger kind of being obviously there following you wherever you go is you know the when the lightning striked the ground when she was kind of riding in the car you know she was in a safe moment but there was clearly danger outside her being under the covers and you know the threats being out there i think that that is what this album is mainly about um so i mean i, I could be wrong I could be wrong, but even if I am wrong, I like I, I like that meaning I created for myself. I like that. Anyways, uh, I overall thought this album was very good. Uh, there's some songs in here that I'm not gonna not gonna really go back to, but I think I found uh, maybe f- four or five songs I'm gonna return to on, on a consistent basis. Those being uh, the first song, Tunnels, um, Power Out, Crown of Love, and The Back Seat. Uh, I'm excited to get into more Arcade Fire because uh, I. I definitely hear a lot of potential not not potential bro this album is well i don't know why i just said but thank you for watching and being here all the way through if you made it this far uh, i appreciate it and i love you guys uh comment anything else you want me to do related to anything ever period so thank you guys for being here i will catch you guys later love you